Praise Jesus. It's good to be in the house Woo! of the Lord. So glad everybody's here again. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just have a, I have one thing that I, I do want to announce, and it's we have been asked by um, the Angel Tree and Rogers, Angel Tree folks on. We have 10 folks here. They are in um, retirement centers. It's just kind of, there's five five ladies and five men who have asked for some stuff for Christmas. And you don't have to wrap them. You just put their initials on them. They'll wrap them. But I was wondering if there was 10 people in here that wanted to volunteer to make these folks' Christmas come true. I have 10 right here. I'm just going to pass them out randomly. Erica's behind you. Is that okay? Do it like this. Would someone want to do that for me as hands went up? Can I volunteer? Thank you, Mama Kim. Yeah, do that. Some of the lists were really cool. One guy got in there and he was like, I want some black sweatpants and a Bon Jovi CD. I'm like, hey, that's like, that's probably like my grandpa didn't even know it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But anyway, thank you guys. Thank you. Just bring this stuff here and we need it. Here's the, here's the urgent part. Is everybody listening? The urgent part is we need it by Wednesday night. So, get to shop until you drop it. Amen. Amen. I know some of you ladies be great at that. I, sometimes I see five or six Amazon trucks just sitting in front of Pastor Laura's house. I don't know how that even happens. When do we need these five? I need, I need that list, everything on there. You don't have to wrap it. Just put the initials at the top of your page. Put the initials on the presents that you purchased and bring them here Wednesday night. And put your sheet with it. Keep all the stuff together. Put your sheet with the initial every single thing. And then... We need it Wednesday night. We're going to bless those folks. The lady just blatantly said, if somebody don't get these 10 folks something, they're not getting nothing for Christmas. So there's my uh, shameful plug, shameless plug. <laughs> Are you guys ready to worship Jesus? Please stand with me. There's no ages on there. Is that intentional? They're retired. 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 Okay. We're having a Christmas Eve candlelight service at 6 on Christmas Eve. Bring your family. It's always an awesome, a, just a great time being in the presence of the Lord. Remember what Christmas is all about. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay, would you guys stand with me? How many of you guys have a, uh, it's on my heart to do this this morning. How many of you guys know somebody or you yourself have a physical need where you need a touch in your physical body? There's hands all over the room. There's hands all over the room. Amen. If if keep keep your hands up. If if you're standing next to somebody or you're close to somebody that has their hand up, would you just go put your hand on them? And then when somebody when somebody gets you, just put your hand down. Keep your hand up till somebody gets to you. Sickness. Disease, cancer, it's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. Jesus says, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Never one time did someone come up to Jesus and say, Jesus, will you touch me? Or will you deliver this person that I know and that I love that's sick? And Jesus said, no, it's not my will for them. Or no, it's not their time. Jesus never said that. Well, if you carry this a little bit longer, it's going to bring me a little bit more glory. He never said that. It brings God glory when your body comes into alignment with the finished work. It brings God glory when by his stripes you were healed becomes your life reality. It becomes, it, that's his glory. And so right now, just begin to believe the work that's already done. Jesus says it is finished. So if your hand's on somebody, just say these words. Say, in Jesus' name, be whole. In Jesus' name, be well. In Jesus' name, body, I command you to be in truth. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just begin to say the name of Jesus. Just begin to stir it up here. Just begin to say Jesus. 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 Jesus, come on. You don't need. The only person you need to lay hands on is the Holy Ghost. He loves you. Jesus. Jesus, I'm tired of seeing sickness be crazy in the body of Christ. It's not his will. In Jesus' name, but this was on me to do this this morning. Come on, just keep praying through. I know it's awkward, but it's good. Just keep praying. Jesus. Jesus. 
Come on, this is your brother. This is your sister. You have to look at it. Say, all the sickness is oppression to the enemy. Begin to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In that name, in that name, that mighty name. There's no other name like his name, Jesus. All hell has to bow. All sickness has to bow to that wonderful name, Jesus. Jesus. If it's a family member, even say their name. If it's somebody at home, say their name and say, be whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Yes, Lord. He makes all things new. 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 Jesus. 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 Give the Lord some praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. If, if you were praying for something that you felt something move, check it. Feel it. See, we prayed for a little girl here. Uh, I think it was last Sunday. And we prayed for her eyes. I seen her yesterday. I was like, how are your eyes doing? She said, they're, they're better. I said, I looked at her. Because you know, you ever heard somebody tell the testimony, you're like, are you sure? Yes. She said, yeah, I'm sure. You guys are going to worship that healing Jesus? Yeah. Father, we worship you. We honor you. We thank you for who you are, God. Have your way in us today. Jesus, I just thank you for what you've done, for what you've already done. And Jesus, I just thank you, Father, for freedom in this place. God, I thank you. Have your way in us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You ready to worship this morning? Yeah. Come on. 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 Come on.
You're welcome. 
all of those things. I am not against any of those things. So don't take me wrong if you think I'm saying that because I'm not. He is the one that happens in the middle and gives you our difference. Because he came. He's anointed to tell you the good news. He is bro He can heal your broken heart so that you can move on. Past the way that you were. He can set you free and heal you from the demons that, that just... Oh. Pastor Josh said this morning, the devil can't curse you. He can't curse you. If you belong to, if you're a child of God, he can't curse you. Will he, will he mess with you and oppress you? Yes, but he can't curse you. You're God's property. He has come to set you free, to heal your broken heart, to deliver you. Those who are captive, you can be one way, and you don't have to try and figure it out. You don't have, you don't have to say, okay, I'm this way, and I'm sick of being this way, and I can't live this way anymore. I want to be this way. Because somebody's 
preached it to me as some church service somewhere. I don't say this because my husband's the preacher. I say this because I was married. And I know what happened in the middle was him. He was the only thing. And now I am free. And there's nothing in this world better than living free. And in Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
for a second and just imagine the first Christmas. Mm -hmm. just want to get our gaze on that. The first Christmas. Imagine what it was like. After reading or hearing the Christmas story, our imagination kicks in and we create nativity scenes in our mind. Mm -hmm. The scene is complete with sheep and Shepherd to manger and the likes. You know the scene the shepherds on one side looking into the makeshift crib, and the three wise men on the other side gazing in the face of Jesus. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew 2. I'm going to read a little bit of a different portion of the Christmas story today. Matthew 2. It says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where yeah, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. Y'all track with me. Don't just, don't just blow by this. Go and search carefully for the young child, 
And when you have found him, bring word, bring back word to me that I might come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they had come into the barn at the manger, oh, that's not what it says, is it? When they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream, that they should not return to Herod, they departed from uh, for their own country another way. I hate to break it to you this morning. I hate to break up your beautiful nativity set. We have a few in our house, and it includes the wise men. I, I hate to tear that up this morning in your mind, but the wise men probably wasn't part of that first nativity scene. It wasn't accurate. It, it wasn't an accurate portrayal of the birth of Jesus to have wise men there. In fact, they were probably the wise men and shepherds weren't there at the same time. It probably seemed like the wise men were late. Maybe their their last name might have been Garner or something, but they were showing up late. They were showing up. Don't have, however, they. They do arrive at a different time. Most likely because they traveled a great distance to come to Jesus. Maybe the first lesson today is this. The distance that you are from Jesus. Listen to me. The distance you are from Jesus isn't as important as beginning the journey to Jesus. Wow, that's good. The distance you are from him isn't nearly as important as you just beginning a journey toward him. If you feel like you're a great distance away, you can still begin taking steps toward him. And the good news is, if you start taking steps toward him, he'll meet you right where you are. Amen. I want to read another, I want to hit on this portion of the scripture that we just read in Matthew 2, verses 9 to 11. Look at it with me again. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Yeah. Yeah. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Yeah. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now I want to read it one more time out of the message. You probably aren't toting that one around. Some of you may be, but probably not. So you'll just probably have to listen. But it says, the same scripture, instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again. The same star that it, they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, listen to me, they kneeled and worshipped him. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage. The Bible says in the message, then they opened their luggage and presented gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Hmm. How many of you know we carry around luggage? It don't look like your typical check bag. But we carry luggage in our heart. We carry baggage. We carry things that the Lord wants us to lay down. But we carry them. We even try to get other people to carry them for us. Come on, we expect our wife 
or our husband to make us happy and carry our bags. It's what happens. We get married and we're like, oh, you make me feel, I feel so silly gooey when I'm around you. Here, carry my bag. <laughs> because they make us feel better. And then we walk along life and we still struggle with those things. And then we get mad at the person for not carrying the bag or not being able to fix us. It's real. It happens. In most marriages, it happens. Mm -hmm. It happened in my marriage. I wanted Laura to take all my stuff. And she wanted me to take all her stuff. And we were fighting over yeah. the stuff that we should have been giving to Jesus. Right. Yeah. Expecting each other to carry. Yep. But how many of you know you can empty your luggage when you kneel down to worship Jesus? Yes. Mm -hmm. When you kneel down to worship is the place yes. to unpack your back. So they've kneeled down. These, these shepherds have came in overwhelmed in awe and they kneel down and they begin emptying their luggage. I believe that what we lay at his feet, he counts as gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Listen to me. We count it as dung. We count it as trash. We count it as junk. We count it as problems and struggles. But he counts it as gold, frankincense, and myrrh because he paid a high price for it. Yes. He paid a high price to take the thing away from you. Yes. To be able to receive the thing that you lay in his feet. He paid a high price for that to happen. Okay. He counts it as gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mm -hmm. hmm. We think we're bringing him our mess, but he's paid a high price for our mess. Okay, getting back to the story. Did, did you hear it when we were reading? Did you hear the little nativity destroyer? Yeah. <laughs> they entered the house, it says. The house. Yep. Luke describes the scene with the shepherds as they see Jesus in the manger. The wise men arrive at a different time. They come to the house. Really? It isn't their punctuality that I want us to focus on today. I want to spend some time examining the presence that they brought. The presence that they brought. The three wise men brought gifts. So we're going to spend the next few minutes to take a close look at the first gift. The first gift that was brought. Go. Go. So y'all with me? Anybody got a roast burning? Okay, I'm going to take just a second, okay? Let me do it. No, I'm good. Now, I've got enough of these little hunks of gold that I want you to take you a few. I mean, don't just get a little. Get you some. Yeah, get you some. Can you go, Get you some. <laughs> <laughs> take this off.
Everybody got some gold? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we eat it? Woo! Plenty. Not supposed to eat it. Yeah. The first wise man pulls back the zipper on his bag and presents gold to the baby that he had came to worship. This gift has, has been examined closely through the ages. It's been said that it was the gift that financed the way for Joseph and Mary to take Jesus to Egypt. And it's very likely that that gift made it possible. Could it be that that gift, the gift that you bring to Jesus, might make someone's salvation possible? Wow. You know, the wise man probably didn't realize that they were going to go to Egypt. He just knew God said, bring a gift. Go worship. What's he said to you? Go worship. Present a gift. You have no idea what God's going to do with it. Could it be the simple task, the mundane, the routine action, the Sunday after Sunday thing that you get tired of, or the repetitious thing that makes you so weary, or the duties that seemingly go by unnoticed or even unappreciated? Could it be the gift that makes it possible for someone else to escape destruction in their life? Come on, we do things and we get in a rut and we just do them because it's what we do and we get so mundane in it and so tired of it sometimes and we think, God, is it even making a difference? Your gift. Could your sacrifice be the thing that moves someone beyond the reach of the enemy? Maybe one lesson from this gift of gold is this. It's very important to present our best to Jesus. Yeah. He's put your best in you. And it's important for you to present it to him because it wasn't intended for you. When we approach the gift, we should bring gifts. When we approach him, we should show up with something to offer. I guess I'm just preaching to me this morning. Amen. Amen. We should show up with something to offer him when we show up at his feet. When we show up to worship, we should show up with something to give him. But I think we show up sometimes in a mindset to receive. And we forget that we've came to give. It's the, va- it, it's, it's the value of the gift that matters. It's not the cost of the gift. It's the value. It's not what it costs you, really. It's what you value. Yes. It's what you put a high price on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you were here Wednesday night, I talked a lot about value. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It matters how you present your gifts through worship. We must present our most value to him. The thing that we put most cost value on. The thing that we have at the top of the list has to be laid at his feet. And this king brought gold. The first gift given was gold. A very valuable thing. Have we given him what we treasure most. Is it finances? Have we held back? Is that worship? Have we gone through the motions? Is it time? Have we been selfish? Is it service? Have we skipped out on what he wants us to do to do what we prefer? It's good preaching. 
Let's make sure we're giving Jesus what we value most. Make sure that your treasure has been presented to him. Why is it so important? Preacher, why do you keep talking about that? Why is it so important that we bring what's valuable to us and lay it down at his feet? It is because Matthew 6, 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yeah. Where you, what you treasure is where your heart's at. If there's anything before him, he's jealous of it. In other words, it's critical. It's crucial. It matters for you to intentionally and willfully lay your treasure at Jesus' feet because what you treasure, you will end up worshiping. What you treasure is what you worship. If we refuse to offer our treasure to Jesus, the day will come that our treasure will take the place of him in our heart. Yep. Yep. Mm. So true. Gold is significant because it's the gift that you would present to a king. It's a prophetic declaration. He's anointed to be king. Mm. Even when he was a baby in his mama's arms in the house, the king knew. I'm bringing you a kingly gift. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The importance of this gift isn't the gift itself, but rather what it says about the one receiving it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's easy to miss the sight of Jesus when we see him as a baby. Yeah. During this Christmas season, let's be reminded that Jesus isn't just a baby, he's king. Yeah. He's king. Maybe we don't understand the concept of king in our governmental system. The gift of gold was the ceremony for what Isaiah prophetically declared, what Laura already said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The government will be on his shoulders. He is the king. The rule, the running, the reigning is on him. He's the only one who can carry the weight of the government of the kingdom of your life, of my life. He's the only one that can really carry it. And we try to place that government somewhere else, even in our own mind, between our two little ears, and we think we got it all figured out and can do this on our own, but he's the only one that can shoulder the government of your life. Yes. Mm. This gift of gold declares the need to establish Jesus as Lord of our life. How do you know if you've made him king? How do you know if you've made him Lord? Isaiah showed us when he allowed the government, the kingship, the lordship of our life to be on him. It's a conscious decision that you have to make. You have to say, okay, I, I'm going to let go of the reins and let you drive. I'm going to turn loose of the... What is that? A steering wheel in a boat? <laughs> the big wheel. I'm going to turn loose and lean up on the side, Jerome. Let the wind blow through my head. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome ain't got any hair, but I do. And he prophesied that to me a long time ago. He had a dream about me or a vision, and he's seen me turning loose. And Jesus is driving finally, and I'm just leaned over here saying, Oh, that's a nice drive. <laughs> With the wind blowing through my hair. Because I'm the type that wants to keep hold of the wheel. Yes. Jesus, you stay over there. I got this. Yep. 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 He said, no, no, son, you got it wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm the driver. Yeah, that's, good. that's good. The government will be on his shoulders. He is he. If we let him be. There's really no confusion. The Bible says he's wonderful. He's counselor. It doesn't say he's a wonderful counselor, which he is a wonderful counselor. But he says he's wonderful and he's counselor. Mm -hmm. God's not the author of confusion. 
When Jesus is king in our lives, we have a counselor that we can turn to. And confusion is dismissed. When Jesus is king, peace rules and reigns in the place of confusion. In fact, Isaiah doubles down. He is the prince of peace, he says. He starts with lack of confusion and ends with peace. To many who claim that Jesus is king reveal otherwise. Their life screams the absence of peace. Perhaps today's the day to reestablish him as king and lord. Allow the peace to reign. Notice I didn't say allow peace to reign. Allow the peace. He is the peace. Allow him to reign. He's almighty God. We know that Jesus is king in our lives when we submit to him. There's no challenge. We surrender, right? It's easy to say, yeah. It's harder to do that. No challenge. We're not challenging Jesus for position. We surrender. We don't fight back or negotiate. He's almighty God. How can we stand in his way or against that? But we do. How many of us claim him as king but behave like he isn't almighty? We claim him as king. But then we live our lives in a way that doesn't prove or doesn't say that he's almighty. Meaning, I'm going to say it again, we claim him as king, but then we walk out and don't see victory. Because we're not seeing him as almighty. We don't believe by faith that he can. Some people say that we see God the way we see our earthly father. Uh Uh-oh, my kids are in trouble. Because if you look at a man and try to equate God through some jacked up, crazy sight of who some man was, you can't get a clear picture of who he is. He's almighty. He can. He will. He wants to. Amen. How many of us live in a way that produces thoughts that his reach is limited? Therefore, we take matters into our own hand. We think, well, I don't really think he's got this one, so I'm going to take care of it. I, I've got this. We call him king, but we try to control. We call him Lord, but we try to lead. He's everlasting father. We establish him as Lord in this life with the understanding there's no close. To his rule and reign. It's not going to come to an end. It's for eternity. He rules and reigns for eternity. The choices we make in this life will have eternal implications for us. It matters what we choose right now. We establish in this life what will be done in eternity. Are y'all bored? No. He isn't just our good, good father now. That's right. He's the everlasting father. If we establish him as king now, his rule will never diminish or subside. His rule will only increase. Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. It continues to grow and grow and increase because it will never end. There will be no end to the increase of his government. There will be no end to the increase of his peace. That's scripture. It's not my opinion. It's what the scripture says. So wise men brought this, this wise man, the first one, when he unzipped his bag, he presented him gold. Have you approached him as king? Have you allowed him to have the government of your life? If you examine your life, is it marked by the wisdom of his counsel? Is your life marked by the peace of his power? Is your life marked By the understanding that you're living for something beyond today. Today, I want to invite you to approach him as king. I want to invite you today to approach him as king. So I've already given you some gold. And I want you to come 
and present it to him on the altar. I want you to come and present your gold. I want you to take a moment in an act of worship to establish his kingship in your life. I, I know it's just some chocolate candy, but it's representing a hump of gold. It's representing something valuable in your life. And I want you to come bring that, lay it on the altar and present it to him and say, I'm making you king of my life. Come on, what are you waiting on? I want you to do that. I want you to come and make him king today in your life. I want you to lay it down at this altar and spend some time in worship. I want you to worship him as king. I want you to present your gift today, just like the wise men did. Come on, if you have to pitch it up here on the stage, it's okay. Just throw the thing up here at his feet and spend some time worshiping him as king. Make his kingship real in your life today. Of our life, Father. We lay down control. 
We let go of control. We say you're key. You're key today in our lives, Jesus. We surrender our lives to you and make you Lord and key in our lives, Father. We worship you. Have your way in us today, God. Father, draw us closer to you, Father, as we surrender to you, Father. God, I know you said that you order the steps of the righteous man. And Father, I just ask you to place the steps of every person that's came today and said you're king in their life, Father. I ask you, Father, that you would place their steps. You would order the steps of the righteous. You would place their steps. You would put them in the place that you desire for them to be, Father. Father, as we turn loose of control, as we let go of of what's important to us, what's uh, what, what's valuable to us as we lay at your feet and say, you're king. Father, have your way in us. Have your way in us. We worship you. We honor you. We praise you, God. There's no one above you, Father. There's no one above you. Come on, just tell him that. There's no one above you. You're king. You're king today. You're king in my life, Father. You're king today in my life. As, as we begin this into this Christmas season, Father, and we celebrate your birth. Father, we also celebrate that you are king. You came to be our king. Father, you're in control of our life. We trust you with it. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him today. Amen. 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 Well, Father, we just thank you. Father, I speak blessings over your people today. I ask you to use this word that it would go deep into our um, our soul, Father, that we would leave different than when we got here, God. And Father, every time we see a Hershey's kiss that's wrapped in gold, we would be reminded that you're king. We'd be reminded that you're king of our lives. Let's give you glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you back on Tuesday. Tuesday night for me. Amen. We love y'all. Hey, and listen. I'm not about to eat all this candy, so come get some of it. There's a bucket in my chair. Just take it with you. Take it. They're so good. Oh, yeah, that's right.